Yo everyone, I'm Troy J Fitness and in this video we're going to be discussing how to get big mass on your back to give you an overall bigger look. The exercise we're going to be looking in detail regarding what form you should be using and also the common mistakes that may be affecting your back growth, the lap pull down. Yo Troy, which is better, the lap pull down or pull ups? Great question. Now, if we were to talk programming, for me personally speaking on back development, I would always pick lat pull down. Why, you may ask. The main advantage of lat pull down is to really focus on my muscle connection to really feel the muscle during the movement. Pull ups, on the other hand, it's more of a focus just to complete the rep to get as many as possible for most people. And that's when they actually start feeling the more of involvement in the biceps and the traps just to complete the rep. So, in that case, not much back isolation. And that's when people come to me and say, Yo, Troy, I can't feel my lats when I'm doing the pull ups what can I do and I just point them straight in direction towards the lap pull down. For lap pull downs we want to be progressively overloading when possible to do so while maintaining good form which we'll definitely get onto later in this video. Typically speaking we're going to be sticking around 8 to 12 rep ranges. That's obviously not to say that you can't go no further or no less. But for the pull up we really want to focus on the progressively overloading side of things which literally can be done by changing the tempo. Maybe an extra second on the way down from last week which are all things you need to be tracking for the best possible muscle growth. You could also just be doing an extra rep as the last week. We are keeping within the 5 to 10 rep range when doing pull ups and if exceeding that with ease then we can simply just start adding more weight to a belt. When adding weight to a lift we want to make sure our ego doesn't get ahead of us and start looking down at the smaller weights. Instead of putting 10 kg on the belt and faking yourself out of bad form, simply add just a 2.5 kg plate or even a 1 kg plate. And if we were to do that week in week out, at the end of the 12 week cycle we could be looking at an extra 10 kg strength on top of your pull up. So my final conclusion of whether you should do pull ups or lap pull down, I would say both. One back day you could primarily focus on lap pull down and the other back day you could maybe focus on pull ups. But Troy I can't do pull ups, I'm too weak. If I keep doing the lap pull down will that get me strength and actually allow me to do that? Yeah, you're dead right. See, any type of pulling movement will assist you to gain in the strength to eventually be able to do your first pull up. But if I was to give you my best advice, I'd recommend using an assisted pull up machine to help you towards that goal while also replicating the movement. Now, if you don't have access to an assisted pull up machine, that's completely fine. You can even use a pull up bar with the resistance bands around your feet and also tied to the top of the pull up bar to assist you to get to the top. The resistance band will take the hardness out of the bottom part of the rep, which most people fail on. Now that that's covered, we're gonna move on to the lap pull down in detail. So firstly, we're gonna look at your overhand shoulder with a part grip lap pull down. We're training multiple biomechanical actions at once. First up, we have the biceps and the brachialis muscle. This is responsible of the elbow flexion where the elbows bend to allow us to pull the weight down to the bottom of the movement. Number two, we have bringing the bar straight down. There will be some shoulder extension and involved handled by the long head of the triceps and the lats which is our target muscle. And third our most important action in the lat pull down is the shoulder adduction which is responsible for bringing down our arms to the side comes from the contraction of the lats and the teres major and minor muscles. I always feel it in my lower back as well, Troy. Is that normal? No. Yes, the more you lean back on the pull down, the more weight you're going to be able to pull, of course. Which then is the reason for people taking it to the extreme and putting on a weight they simply cannot handle and going far too much of a lean. That's of course when momentum and the lower back completely take over and you may as well not be even training for your lats. So instead, just lower the weight down, find a failure weight that you can do between 8 to 12 reps while maintaining in good form. Now to start off we can use a wide variety of grips and attachments to target the different regions of the back. But for me I like the overhead medium grip just slightly wider than shoulder width apart brought to the front of the neck and it does provide the best combination of involvement between strength lats and biceps. When we have found the bar of choice and hooked onto the lat pull down machine the next thing we need to focus on is making sure the knee pads are adjusted correctly. And if your pull down machine doesn't have these knee pads I'd advise running away from it. Oh really? It's not important is it? These pads actually help you perform the movement a lot better due to the stability. Watch out if you have to stand on your toes in order for your knees to be pressurized against this pad then go get some plates, even a 5kg or 2.5kg plate and lay them on the ground as otherwise you'd find your bum raising off the seat just to take the tension away from the movement. So if your knees are fully locked in pressurized against this pad and your heels are on the ground, there's no cheating involved. Well at least from the lower half of your body. Grip the bar slightly wider than shoulder width apart as for most bars just before the bend 
which is considered a wide grip. Studies have shown that a larger percentage of trainees that use a thumbless or suicide grip to have more connection with the lap. And I will kindly ask that no one tries this suicide or thumbless grip on any other push movement because you're going to kill yourself. You wouldn't want to smack all those pearly whites out of your mouth down your throat. So knees brace against the pad, we have our heels on the ground and when starting the rep focus on bringing the chest up and dropping the back down as opposed to being dead straight back, not allowing yourself to lean at all. And they're struggling to get the weight past their face and you're just gonna take all the skin off your face. A slight lean back leans to an extended upper back, which is always the best way to go. Begin the movement by depressing your scapula and tucking your shoulder blades down. Focus on bringing your elbows to the side of your body. So imagine pulling down and in as opposed to just down. Okay, well, how far should I come down then? Now, Interesting question. I see a lot of people bringing the bar well too far down and then it starts to proceed into a dip movement. No. The bottom of the rep will be located at the top of the chest, just under the chin, no further. I even like to implement a second pause on the way down at the bottom of the rep, just for extra mind muscle connection, why not? After that, you just reverse the movement, focusing on fighting the resistance of the weight pulling you back up, even do a slight lean in for the muscle fiber tears. And once you reach your elbow to a full extension, that's when you depress your shoulder blades and lift the chest up. Yo, Troy, sorry, me again. Just wondering how far should I lean down then you're not really answering me. Right, okay, for people that may need me to go into more detail. Some people do a huge lean back, some people do a straight back. So I like to just go somewhere in the sweet spot in between. And uh, I had another question. Oh, for fuck's sake, man, what? Sorry, just in terms of grips and different attachments, well, what different parts does it work in your back? So we have a supinated grip, which faces your wrists towards your body. And I'd recommend a closer grip in from the last one, not shoulder width apart just to save wrist pain. This will be involving more of the biceps as well as the lats while doing the movement. We also have a close neutral grip, which lots of people find this to be an actual better attachment and a better way of arm pass, which will be still hitting your lats as well as its promotion and shoulder extension. Most people prefer this. I would rather keep it out of my program as I do have a lot of shoulder extension with the amount of rowing I do in my program. So if you do a lot of cable rows, maybe it'd be nice to do some form of lap pull down with the straight bars. So for me, the extra shoulder extension is not really needed in my program. Wow, that video was actually really helpful, I won't lie. So how do I keep in the loop and learn more information off you like that? Well, you could just subscribe to the channel and turn the bell notifications on so you never miss a post. And you also further your education on fitness. Now, if you have any questions or if you have any requests on further videos for me to cover, drop them in the comments below. And until then, I'll see you in the next one.